Hello guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and I'm a flower farmer in East Yorkshire in the UK and I make lots, lots of content about stuff that's going on on my flower farm from planting out and preparing my flower beds to harvesting the flowers and making bouquets and then all the stuff that goes along in between like all of the fun little projects that we do such as converting a shipping container into a, flor a flower studio and um, all kinds of stuff to do with the farm and the animals and everything that's going on on the farm. So this week I thought that I would take you along with me for a week at work and I did lots of stuff this week such as um, preparing a couple of the flower beds and planting them out. So I've had a lot of plants in my greenhouse over the winter that are ready to go out now such as foxgloves, snapdragons and things so what I decided to do this week was really crack on with getting some of the beds mulched and ready for planting and um, get those plants in the ground so that they can grow away so we've been getting some really quite nice weather this week so it's a perfect opportunity to put the plants out and let them get the roots down and start producing flowers for us to, for the start of the season so if you enjoy this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you are not already so i hope you enjoy and don't forget to leave a comment if you've got any questions or you just want to say hi i always try to reply to as many comments as i can so let's get into it so i'm just in the worm room this morning because i want to sieve some worm compost so that i can um, make a soil drench for my uh, plants that I want to plant out today, potentially today. So if I sieve some out, then I can put some worm castings in a mesh bag and um, just swirl it round in the water and that should release lots of beneficial microorganisms, plant growth hormones and things like that, which will hopefully be taken up by the plant. And um, when it gets planted out into the hole, it goes into the field with all of that goodness going along with it so hopefully that will give the plant a good boost as it gets into the ground um, so what I'm going to do is take some stuff out of these bins here and um, sieve it into um, an, a fresh bin and then collect the sieved stuff so that I can use it uh, out in the field <music> So I've sieved the vermicompost with two different mesh sizes because the first uh, mesh size filters out all of the big stuff, all of the big worms and big kind of debris stuff but then the l larger pieces of worm castings or kind of debris and uh, worm cocoons goes down through that, um, through that initial um, mesh size so that is uh, three eighths of an inch and so then I will go again with this second mesh which is much finer and that will um, filter out larger bits of organic matter and then and majority of the um, worm cocoons. So then we're left with this really fine um, nice quality worm uh, compost. So I'm going to take that and um, put it into uh, a container and take it around to the field so that I can create a, a drench for my new plants that I'm going to be putting out in the field today and I have actually looked under the microscope at this worm compost stuff and it's got loads of really good like bacterial feeding nematodes and um, lots of different amoebas and um, fungi and stuff like that so I'm really looking forward to seeing how the worm compost is going to benefit the plants in the long run because I really think it's going to um, be worthwhile doing this and investing in the worms and things like that and the other thing to mention is the other week I had a, a soil test done on the microbiology that is in my soil and I had it taken from one of the dahlia beds in the front field and I was really shocked by the results because the they found that I didn't have any fungi um, no 
beneficial nematodes and things like that they found two root feeding nematodes which is a bad thing um, and high population density of um, bacteria so that gives me all the more reason to start working on the soil just really need to 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 work on that more and um, hopefully it's it gives me a good canvas to see how these things are going to work in the long run um, and hopefully we can start um, putting lots of things into practice to create better soil in the long run and i think the worm compost is going to be really a key component in that as well so hopefully we can add some lots of the beneficial stuff that i've seen under the microscope into the soil and it's going to start breeding in the soil and creating a really good environment for those microorganisms and the plants as well. So let's go off to the field and we've got lots of mulching and planting out to do today. So these two beds behind me are the ones that I would like to get prepped for um, mulching and planting today. Uh, we got this fourth one in planted the other day, it's about three quarters planted so there's still room to plant at the back of that which um, I will probably will want to do before we plant anywhere else. And, oh, and here, in this bed here. We have 18 inch space in which I used for sunflowers um, last season. So I've got some foxgloves and things which I'm thinking would might benefit from 18 inch spacing but I'm not really sure about what to do with that. Um, I could even put the 9 inch spacing on top of it and bear some extra holes in so that we've got some more spaces for plants if I'm not necessarily going to use it for um, 18 inch spacing and then I think this one is here is 12 inch spacing so I'm going to take the weed membrane up and Rob put me a nice big pile of compost there yesterday so we've got plenty to be getting on with and um, my, I've got my helper Tina coming today so uh, we should get lots done with the both of us being here and yeah so what I'm going to do is take the fork and I've been doing this on my beds recently to try and help with compaction. I'm going to um, put the fork in the ground and pull back on it so that it lifts the soil up a little bit, aerates the soil and puts lots of oxygen and nitrogen into the soil. And then um, we are going to go over it with the compost and then, um, and then we will plant into it if we have time but I don't think we'll get time today I think we're just going to concentrate on the mulching um, in this bed here I've got lots of the thistles that I get in that bed there in the polytunnel also in this tunnel here in this bed here so I'm going to be digging up those thistles by hand just to try and weaken the root system there and hopefully what I might do actually is this barrel blue barrel here I tried to make some alpaca JLF out of it but um, I put straw in and I realised that putting straw into a barrel with water is not a good idea so I might tip that out and start using it as a weed collection bin and um, put a load of weeds into it put some water and some leaf mould soil in it and we can use that as a weed fertiliser in the summer months when um, we've got flowers in the field. <music>
just started raining now but we have got quite a lot done this morning which is good um i managed to broad fork the whole of that bed there and then tina's um, mulched almost half of it so i might just try and finish the latter half of it this afternoon before the rain gets too bad hopefully it won't get too bad um and then that that's that bed prepped i've been really impressed with how i mean it's definitely compacted still and um quite wet in places but i'm really impressed by how many worms there is in the soil and that can only be <clears throat> a good thing it's they're going to um, recycle the nutrients within the soil um, and the burrows that they create is going to help to create extra aeration as well so we want to keep those worms happy I, I think that possibly the reason why there are so many worms there is because those two beds have been mulched with cardboard quite a few times so the worms absolutely go mad for cardboard so i think that that could be the case why why we've got so many worms in there but <coughs> i definitely want to be able to keep those happy um in the season ahead so hopefully we can get that planted out soon and um things will start looking good in the field hopefully because it feels kind of spring like at the moment so we don't want to get caught out by full spring of course so I'm not going to be planting out anything that shouldn't be planted out at, the t at this time. Um, but it ju it's just nice to have some warmer days and some of the fields are drying up and things, which is nice. And so we're not getting muddy boots every single day. So yeah, I'm going to crack on with a little bit more compost uh, mulching and then um, probably call it a day after that. So as you can see I'm a little bit damper than I was before and it has been raining but I've got the bed finished and uh, it's all mulched and looking good so I'm pleased with the effort that we've made today and the progress that we've made. So I've got eight beds out there and I've mulched two and the third one should be done probably by tomorrow so I'm almost halfway there. The other week I kind of was stressing out a bit that I had so much work to do and I wasn't going to be able to work through it but we're in mid-March now and I can get at least one bed mulched in a day so I need to just take that into consideration when I'm stressing. If I want to do it it's going to take me six days really to mulch all of the beds which is, isn't really a lot in the grand scheme of things and that's just in this field there is some more to do in the front field as well but we can do it we can work through it it's not too difficult I'm earning my calories at the end of the day because I'm absolutely sweating today and um, we've worked hard so I'm pleased with that so I'm gonna head in and edit some videos and things and um, I'll catch up with you again tomorrow So I've just done about half of that bed broad forking but it's getting very claggy and smushy clay soil down there so I'm just going to let it rest for a bit because it rained a lot last night and yesterday and it's going to be sunny and a little bit breezy today so I'm hoping that's going to dry out the soil a little bit and it's going to be easier to work with maybe this afternoon or even tomorrow so I think what I'll do now is I'll plant those plants that I had soaking yesterday um it's mainly it's Dorcas and Ami and two varieties of Ami so I'm going to be planting those out the plants are quite small um because I didn't put anything on over the autumn uh, or over the winter period which was naughty me but usually things do fine when you plant them out small anyway so that's what my experience anyway and there's also quite a few dock leaves that are popping up in that area so I'm going to um, trowel those out or hoary hoary knife those out 
and um, add them to my weed bucket and then I can fill up that bucket with the weeds in and get that fertiliser started off because I forgot to put water in it yesterday. morning I got um, there's about 60 holes left in this bed here which has been planted up with a variety of things uh, like larkspur, corn cockle, bipleurum, cornflower, dorcas and two different ami varieties ami visnaga and ami magus. This afternoon it's been quite windy um, today and sunny so I'm gonna have another go at forking this over because I would like to get that done before the end of the day and start mulching um, and then that's another job ticked off the list so I'm gonna give it a go see how it is and then um, start putting some compost on there So that is those two beds finished mulching which is brilliant. I'm pleased we've got that done in the last couple of days and what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to keep the camera rolling and I'll probably be planting out into one of those two beds there or doing some other kind of job on the farm so I'll take you along with me I'll see you again tomorrow. Good morning guys we made it to Friday and we got loads of stuff done this week but I'm hoping to just do a little bit more today just to get some more things done before the weekend and I've got um, some foxgloves and things that I'm thinking from in here that I might plant out in the field around the back and um, I've got to collect the TP canvas today from the um, place who said they couldn't um, fix it so I'm going to collect that today and um, I've emailed the <laughs> I've emailed the company that originally gave me a quote for um, repairing the TP and hopefully they'll get back to me and I can send the TP canvas off to them because really I want to be starting to run workshops next month and um, time is ticking away so hopefully I can get that done sooner rather than later and we can start running workshops again and there's something else that I just wanted to tell you about which was my compost heap that I made um, a few weeks ago now and I kind of got it hot a few times but only up to about 50 degrees 55 degrees um, and then we had some bad storms which kind of just cooled it right down dried it out and things so I was kind of given up on it thinking I'll just wait until the weather's a bit warmer and I can move it to somewhere a bit more sheltered etc um, but I started doing some bakashi composting uh, a couple of weeks ago and one of my bakashi bins was ready and I decided to just put all the contents of the bakashi bin in the middle of this compost pile that I'd m made previously so I turned it and I put a load more water in because it was so dry so I watered it um, quite a bit and then I put the bakashi in the centre of the compost pile and I just checked on it this morning I took the it's got blankets on the top of it took the blankets off and it was all steamy and um, then the um, 
the temperature was about 65 degrees, which was brilliant. So if you don't know about Bokashi already, it is um, a form of kind of fermenting food waste which you wouldn't normally compost. Um, so things like um, dairy, meat, cheese, oils and fats and things, you can put all sorts of stuff in the um, Bokashi bin and you inoculate, you, you sprinkle the Bokashi brain, <laughs> you sprinkle Bokashi grain onto the food waste which um, is inoculated with bacteria and then it's a form of anaerobic um, fermentation so that it, it composts down really quickly and um, acts as a great kind of activator for compost piles so I think um, that's basically what happens with Bokashi but you can um, google it if you're not sure that's been really good so I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks I'm going to be making a couple more compost piles um, and trialing out a, diff a few different ways of making compost I've been making a couple of other videos this week so keep an eye out for those um, I'm doing an update on the worm farm and I am also been making and applying some fish amino acid fertilizer so if you want to know about that then keep an eye out for the other videos so what I'm gonna do is go and grab my trolley and I can take all of those foxgloves around to the back of the farm and get them planted out this morning. So I just started folding back the weed membrane to pin it down and in between all of the folds of the membrane where it's been damp there is an abundance of slugs so I've just gone along and picked all of the ones off that I can see but obviously that means that we are going to be having issues with slugs this year so I definitely need to be on it with the slug pellets so we don't have the slug problems that we had last year so last year the slugs decimated a lot of the crops that are planted out so I need to be on it with that this year to make sure that they don't destroy my crops. So I've just made a little bit of a quick decision to I've just put the weed membrane back down and I just feel like with knowing the size that foxgloves get to I don't really want them to be too close to the edge especially on that side where there's going to be plants next door so um, what, I'm, what I've decided to do is overlay this 9 inch spacing uh, template over this 18 inch spacing and I'm going to bend more holes into it and try and interplant the foxgloves with something else. Um, I have got some snapdragons that can go out so I was thinking foxgloves and snapdragons together in this bed um, and hopefully there will be a good mix together. <laughs> I'm not sure how it's going to work, but you never know unless you try. So, what and then that, what will that'll allow me to do is put the smaller snapdragons that are just going, kind of going to be a tall plant on the edges of the beds and in the more towards the centre. I can put the foxgloves. So I'll get burning some more holes and then we can get planting out and we'll see how it looks. <music> went to Hull earlier on collected the TP uh, canvas and we also collected the steel for making a broad fork so we're going to be doing that tomorrow I think so I'll definitely be filming that 
Um, I might even ask Rob if he'll give me a go on the welder. So you might see your girl welding in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'll need to check on what time it is because it might be the, towards the end of the day now and I need to feed the worms before the weekend. So I will go and have a look at what plants I've got and then I'll come back and see whether I've got time to plant them out before the end of the day. <music> Well guys, it's been a very busy week and I've just finished planting out uh, all of the biennials and things that I had sitting in my cold frame. There's Some of them were a lot bigger than others, especially there was some really big Hesperus, some big Sweet Williams and some big foxgloves that had been um, rooting through the weed membrane in um, the cold frame. But they look really healthy and I think they'll do fine outside in the field. So I've got lots of um, snapdragons, foxgloves, hesperus, sweet williams and I think that's it. I will try and find something else to go in between the rest of the foxgloves. So that is my week finished now. Um, thank you so much for coming along with me. Um, and I hope you will stay tuned for the next video. There's lots coming in the next couple of weeks. So don't forget that if you are not subscribed, to subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Thanks so much guys, have a good weekend and I'll see you later.